ever wanted to understand guitar bass electronics but didn't want to have to get a degree, then this series is for you. Hi, my name is Ted Burmis and this is part five in Guitar and Bass Electronics Simplified. As you saw in the intro, we are talking about volume controls. We are only referring to passive volume controls. In other words, there is no battery or other power source. We need a little bit of theory to talk about our volume control. And for that, we're gonna start off with a component called a resistor, seen here. Uh, a resistor does exactly what the name says. It resists the flow of electrical current and also provides something that we care about mostly for volume controls, a voltage dividing capability when you have more than one resistor in a circuit. Resistance can be measured with a meter uh, like the following one right here. This is a, known as a DMM or digital multimeter. It can measure uh, the resistance in units of ohms, and ohms is analogous to miles for distance. Don't worry so much about what ohms means. Just know that a higher number for ohms means more resistance. So 100K, where K stands for 1,000, is a much higher resistance than 1K ohm resistance. The reason we start off talking about resistors is even though we generally don't use resistors by themselves as components in volume controls, we do use another component that makes use of resistors. It's known as a potentiometer. And here are a couple of pictures of potentiometers here. This is uh, the top where the knob usually is connected to on a guitar on this shaft here. And here is the back of it. If we have a diagram of this pot looking from the back, if I show the inside of the pot, we have what we call here a resistive element that goes from this terminal to this terminal. And there's another thing called a wiper here that's controlled to that shaft that we saw earlier. As you turn the shaft, this wiper moves and contacts this resistive material. And what you end up with is two variable resistors, one between this point and the wiper and another between this point and the wiper. To demonstrate that, here we have our DMM again and we have it set up to measure resistance. What we have here is a 250K ohm potentiometer and that number 250K represents the maximum value between the wiper and either of the terminals. Or you could also think of it as the value between the two outer terminals. So it's the maximum resistance of the potentiometer. In this case, we have the DMM measuring the resistance between the outer terminals. And you can see here that it's measuring 250K ohms in our idealized potentiometer here. Now you can measure the resistance between any two points on this potentiometer. You can go from this outer terminal to the wiper terminal. And in this case, the shaft is set in the middle. So you will have approximately 125K between these two terminals. And you will also have 125K between these two. Now, if we go from the wiper to this outer terminal here and have the shaft so that it's all the way here, then we are going to measure all of this resistance and it's gonna be 250K. Let's see what happens as we move the wiper around. You can see that the resistance is actually decreasing because the amount of resistive material between the two terminals is reducing as the wiper moves. And as we go the opposite direction, it increases. 
All right, that explains how that component works. Now, the reason we're talking about that in the first place is we need this component for a function called a voltage divider. So to measure voltage, we can actually use this same meter, the DMM, but we set it up for voltage measurement. Now I'm gonna do another thing here where I put a ground symbol, and ground is literally a connection to the earth, which in electronics terms is your reference point. So any voltage above ground is considered a positive voltage and any voltage below ground is considered a negative voltage. Ground is simply a reference point. Don't get too bogged down by what it means, but it is an important point of reference. Now we're going to add a ideal voltage source between ground and the outer terminal of this pot. And remember, in this case, between these terminals is the constant 250k ohm resistor. So this voltage source is simply going to drive this 250k ohm potentiometer. Now let's hook up the DMM to measure the voltage. If we go from the wiper to the ground terminal with the wiper set up as it is now, the voltage is zero in this case. And that is because the resistance is zero between these two values. And what we'll see is the ratio of these two values of resistors between this terminal and the wiper and the wiper in this terminal is going to provide a adjustable voltage depending on how this shaft is moving. For our example here, we're going to keep things simple and say this is a 250 millivolt voltage source. It's actually an AC voltage source. Don't worry too much about what that means. It's just a type of voltage, meaning that it moves with time. Now let's see what happens as we move the shaft. So as the resistance decreases between the wiper and ground, the voltage decreases, as you can see here and it's decreasing in the same ratio of the two resistance values between the outer terminal and the wiper and the wiper and ground. All right, that's in a nutshell how a voltage divider works. Now, why did we bring this up in the first place? Well, for our guitar or bass, let's replace that voltage source with a pickup in this case a single coil pickup even though 250 millivolt constant output is not something you would normally see out of a guitar we're going to say theoretically that this pickup is constantly putting out 250 millivolt ac similarly with the previous voltage source as the pot moves around the voltage across those terminals changes finally let's put a output jack this is a jack that you would have where you connect your instrument cable to your instrument. I'm gonna remove the pot's internal circuitry. And this, in a nutshell, is your voltage control for your instrument. We have our pickup, which is our voltage source, driving a voltage divider circuit comprised of a potentiometer. That potentiometer has its wiper tied to the output of the guitar and the other terminal is tied to ground. Here's an actual electronic circuit for a Stratocaster. This is the backside of a pick guard where they have the electronics attached for this particular guitar. What I wanted to show is in the real world, the body of the potentiometer is often grounded. In this case, we have a solder blob and solder is sort of a low temperature electronic weld between components, in this case, a wire and the potentiometer. This is done for shielding and we're gonna have a future video on shielding. So uh, if 
you wouldn't mind subscribing, uh, I'll let you know as soon as that comes out and it'll come straight to you. Thank you.